She's been a television and video writer producer for nearly three decades, uh, written for numerous magazines and websites, along with being an 11 time Emmy award winning writer and video producer. He's also the author of two. Wait, 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 wait. We're still going Brian's, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He wrote it. <laughs> um, and um, we were happy to have him here for Almost Live, uh, the show that just wouldn't die. Yeah. Um, and that was a great event. And so we're excited to have him here tonight to you talk missed to Bob. You here. missed it. A sh Almost Live, the show that wouldn't die. Yeah. Hello, you know. You're doing great. <laughs> but really, everyone is so excited to have Bob Newman here. Boris S. Ward. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Wait, 18 characters. 18 oh. characters. 18? Yeah. Only? Wow. Well, we counted one day, and, and by God, we had we got the 16, but 18 characters. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. But, so, I'm going to cut this short, because you're not here to see me. And welcome Brian to the stage. And, and afterwards, I have a few minutes. Thank you all for coming here, and I really appreciate it, and I know Bob does too. Um, I'm basically, I'm going to just do a couple of minutes to give you some backstory on the book itself. And then after that, it's just going to be open discussion, Q&A, ask questions of Bob. If you have any questions for me, which I doubt you will, they're mostly for Bob, but that's quite all right as well. A very nice gentleman brought us a couple of props tonight. Oh, oh. All right. oh. Yeah, how's that? Sweet. And... Super. I'm I see that I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Hang this up so everybody can see it on display. That is that look that just goes. <laughs> there you go. Then we've got a very, very tiny. Oh, <laughs> tiny I've never seen this. Gorse the friendly fur. Where did purple. Did they make tiny Gorse the friendly fur? No, I made it. You made it? Oh, it's very, very good. He even yes. makes wonderful stuff. And then, yes. Check this out too. Griswold! Did you make this also? No, sir. Who made Griswold? Uh, I think Alan Smith. Have you made Griswold? Oh, Dixie did. Yeah. 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 Well, can wedge him in there. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. 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 Sturdly looks like Sturdly. Yeah, Sturdly is not here. No Sturdly. Um, okay, well. Let me give you a quick backstory on, on how this book came about. So 12 years ago, I wrote a book about J.P. Patches and company. And um, then about a, I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago, I wrote a book about Almost Live. And some friends of mine were asking me, what are you going to write about next? And I said, well, I'd really like to write something Seattle-centric again. And I didn't really, you know, I was searching, trying to find something that might have some good material. And it occurred to me that all the material I needed was right there in front of my eyes. So basically what I did was I created fan fiction. I made up a bunch of stuff <laughs> using virtually every character that Bob Newman played on the show. He played everybody except J.P. Patches. So we've got the story, and we've got a protagonist who's a reporter, and there's something weird going on in Seattle. Very un-Seattle behavior is taking place around the city. People are doing things like jaywalking, or oh. making eye contact with strangers, <laughs> or using umbrellas when it rains, Ooh. or not recycling. Oh. And he's like, what the hell? Something weird is going on here. And he's got to get to the bottom of this, all right? And so he begins this, it's a, basically, it's kind of a mystery comedy. It's not so much a whodunit, as a how done it and a why done it. The why is the most important. The why done it too. And that's where Boris S. Ward, the second meanest man in the world, comes into play. And so also in this book, so this character, uh, this reporter, he uses all of these contacts to find out what's going on. And so he's interacting with Gertrude. 
with Miss Smith and Miss Smith Delivery Service. Uh, Gorst the Friendly Furple, and of course, Farmer Frank and Farmer Fred <laughs> from Ferndale and Fife, um, makers of fine purple fodder. And uh, he also works with Officer Patty Wagon and Zenobia the Witch. <gasps> Thank you. Um, and let's see who else? Swami Pastrami. The Swami of Pastrami and Ding Batman. And Mr. X R size. How do you remember all of this? <laughs> That's right. And who else? Who Catch else? Can. Catch a can, of course. Thank you. Catch a can, the animal man who calls every animal Fred. And Leroy Frump. That's right, Leroy Frump. So every one of these characters got woven into the story, and I got to make up, make up shit about them. Okay. So things like you know, there's a possibility. It's suggested. It's a possibility that Zenobia actually was responsible for the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Or that the popularity of Nirvana, since Zenobia is actually from Aberdeen, Washington. And Boris S. Ward was actually training to be in the 1964 Olympics as a boxer. Who knew? Uh, he was such a fan of that. So that's the kind of stuff I just made up and wove throughout the story. So I think you're going to have a lot of fun reading it. I had an absolute ball there's not a serious page in this book, yeah. all right? <laughs> not one freaking serious page in it. Is there any truth in it? Uh, well, yes, but you will not know if there's truth based on it. Yeah. <laughs> because some of the stuff are just things that I uh, that I based on experiences that I've had or people I know have had. Stop right? being so serious. That's Stop right. Exactly. And also, this book is, is a little bit of a love letter to all things Seattle to people of a certain age, such as myself, who grew up here. So, because our protagonist, he never eats at home. He's always eating out. He's always drinking out. And so he's going to, you're going to be reading it going, up. Oh, I've been there. Oh, I've been there. Oh, I drank there. Yep, I passed out there. So you're, you're going to find a, a lot of places like that throughout the book, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to see things like the bubble later, and dags, and uh, and of course dicks and ivers and everybody else you could possibly imagine. Seattle City. I tried to get in. So, without any further ado, we'd like to open the floor to anybody who has any questions for either of us. Bring it on. Yeah, yeah, did Sandy Hill play your part in, as uh, Miss uh, Smith, uh, Smith in your book? No. Oh, darn. No, as so much as you'd like that to be the case, I'm sure. But no. Uh, did, did Sandy Hill ever play Miss Smith at any one time? Hey, you doing, Snooky? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, I think, I think Chris got it to do that. And, uh, well, if it was, it was probably a one-time deal. Oh yeah, one-time yeah. deal kind of thing. Yeah. And, but she got more, more note in the newspaper, and more, uh, you know, than she ever got being Sandy Hill. <laughs> but being born and being being uh, Miss Smith. Miss Smith. Yep. God, she was, she was a, the kids would come up dressed as Sandy Hill. I really Miss Smith. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Somebody has to have. Yes, sir. Yeah, I would like to talk about. Uh, I was not living here during the JP, but I, I'm, I'm very I'm familiar I'm with sorry. it later. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was, but I, but I, but I went to a lot of JP's performances. I went to the uh, the the statue unveiling down at every time. We got a statue. Yeah. 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 And you look great. <laughs> Yes. If you look underneath your dress, if you look underneath the dress, it says Cotton Beacon. Yes. I'm sorry. You, were, you didn't have a defense. Now, sure. when you did the show, was it, did you take like summers off or was it every day? Every Monday Friday. Friday. Every day, Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. And we did uh, Saturday, Saturday, did Saturday, Saturday show a lot. Yeah. I think they, they've got some sponsor, to, you know, okay, it's your show. Yeah. With the red show, or, you know, Safeway or something, you know. And you got a bunch of money for doing each show. <laughs> oh, God, no, you're yes. tired <laughs> for doing three shows a, a week. Three shows, I get paid $7.50 together, and not per show, but together, you know. And we'd get a couple of those a week was okay with my paycheck, you know. 
That was back when seven dollars was seven dollars. That's right. That was yeah. seven bucks was seven bucks. Yeah. A lot of people have asked why you can't find any, hardly any footage of the J.P. Patches show, and there's a good reason for that. Um, a lot of the shows, you know, they, they did the show live for the most part, okay? But they also, they would tape, they had one tape for each day of the week, all right? Oh. Seven tapes, six tapes, excuse me. And so, Monday, they would tape a show. The next Monday, they taped over that show. The next Monday, they taped over that show. So there's virtually, there's very, very little footage of the show. Yep. And in the, you were in uh, Seattle Center. I've got a picture from way back then. And I was wondering, how you guys were looking for, there was a contest or something trying to find, you know, your guys trying to find something in the Seattle Center. Do you remember? I'm yes, I, I bet you I know what you're. I think I know. Too. I think that's when you guys were searching for Gorst. No, that was Woodland Park. That was, oh, that was Woodland Park. Park? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. he's wearing he's wearing a chef hat there. You are wearing a chef hat. Maybe <laughs> smart, maybe. You don't remember this one thing from fifty-five years ago? <laughs> oh, he remembers every show. It's every a great show, picture. every yeah. word for word. Word for word, yeah, right. Thank you. <laughs> Must be character number 19. Jeez. So, did you get a number of how many people are here tonight? Gosh. No, I did not. Thousands. 7,000? Yeah. Well, we, we turned it into newspapers for tomorrow. They got to know. Yeah. <laughs> All six. You know. Thousand. Yes, ma'am. More than the Arbor. So, Bob, I just joined. Um, remember um, so, yes, I remember you. So what Bob did after he left um, Cairo was he, when people were on Channel 9, he put makeup on them and would make them look absolutely Oh, you forgot. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that's what, that's what you did for thank you, thank 15 you. years, right? You know, I did that for 15 years, maybe, you know. Yeah. And really, honestly, first I burned on you. I was pretty good, you know. <laughs> you know, they come, they come off the street, you know, and then they make him look normal and make him look uh, television worthy. And you get these people in from Hollywood, yeah, they expected their makeup done. And yeah, I mean, they're pain faces and that stuff. But I, yeah, I was pretty good. I was a makeup guy. Your makeup, makeup tonight is Mr. Great. Robert makeup. <laughs> That's right. So I know the answer because you, you've told me some of these stories over the years, but I think people would love to know the bloopers that happened like on live like about the rabbits when you opened the box to show the rabbits yeah remember that story yeah I mean, they were busy what were the rabbits doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then, yeah and then I, I opened it up and there they were in there you know going at it <laughs> and, and i like I, uh, put the top back down and i looked at him and said yeah, the rabbits open. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. Any of the other bloopers? Any of the other oh, funny all things the time. that happened like that? He was a blooper. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the stuff would happen all the time. We, we, we'd make dirty out of it, but try to keep it, the answer clean, you know. Because, you know, we, we, we had kids too. Go ahead, one more. One more, fine. Can you talk about the uh, the uh, serial controversy you guys had in the early days when the FCC came after you for, you know, sponsoring ser you know, serials and stuff that uh, were s supposed we to be The signals department stayed away from that as much as they could. And they wanted that money to come in. But they, you know, if uh, General Mills were complaining, we Stay away. So it wasn't as bad as you think. But it changed things. Yeah. It totally changed the industry. Yeah. It what changed was the that? profit. What's that? What selling, was that? Selling that? stuff to kids. Yeah, they couldn't sell stuff to kids, basically. They couldn't market stuff to kids. That was kind of the end of the kids' show host because of that. Yeah. Because in the past, I mean, that's how they made a lot of their money was they would, you know, sunbeam bread. Uh, or because yeah. JP and, and Gertrude were constantly Sunny plugging Jim. Sunny Jim, exactly. Sunny Jim. Uh, uh, Sunny you know, um, R.S. Franks. All, just you name it, and Fra they were. Frosty they were, Puppies. One of them was a mm -hmm. popsicle. Flicks. 
Please like that. Let's stand. I wasn't aware of what he just brought up. So, um, what what was the deal? Okay, well, basically, I, I don't know all the details, but in a nutshell, what happened was, for years and years and years, kids shows the host would would uh, have a deal with, let's say, Wonder Bread. Right. Okay, Wonder Bread would say, "We'll pay you a little extra money if you." Plug, plug our product on your show. So we would do a commercial, a live commercial. Right. You know, hey kids, boy, you really, you know, builds the body's strong in 12 ways, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and they do that on the show. And for some reason, maybe a parent complained, not sure what, but the FCC all of a sudden said, nope, these hosts have way too much influence on kids. And we're gonna stop that. So they're no longer allowed to do live commercials on their shows. And that was kind of the end of the J.P. Patches show as we know it. But, but I, I remember reading that that's why all of a sudden Grandpa Patches was plugging products. Oh, because yeah, while, the, while the host wasn't plugging, well, okay, here's Grandpa Patches to tell you about Wonder Bread. So he kind of skirted around. The end around. Kind of. Exactly. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Nice. yeah. I didn't was, know about that. Was the money going to the stations or was it going to the it had to have been going to the station Are you kidding me you think so? a station give up that money no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no chance that's why they had us because they, we had such a draw right right i mean uh, we were great stan was very good uh i got a picture of stan morrison at my house uh stan above me uh and out of stan was who else was it? I know it was Franklin Bill. Oh, Captain Puget, yeah. crazy. Yeah. Captain Puget, Wonder Wonder. Wonder Wonder. Wonder Wonder. Wonder Wonder. Wonder Wonder. Wonder Wonder was network out of New York City. No, she, no, was, no, she was She was Channel right 5. Here. King 5. She was King 5. Yeah. Oh, you got a shit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, she was. She was. She was. She was. Her son's a doctor in Anna Court. King 5. Why didn't I know? Yeah, she was. Ruth Prince. Ruth Prince, that's right. That's right. Exactly right. Okay, keep going. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we had a good time, and that one, that was when it was okay to have a good time. One of the things since the show, uh, like I said, it was live, but it was also live to tape. So they a kid, almost they almost never stopped once they were recording. And there was a story that I remember Chris and Bob telling me one time, and it was in the JP book. So if you've read the book, you probably heard the story. So forgive me. But they were doing uh, Miss Smith, Miss Smith delivery service, okay? And Bob's Miss Smith, and of course you never see Bob's face, but you, you know, hey, Snooky Poo, I got a joke for you. And uh, JP, of course, has no idea what the joke's gonna be. And he's like, yeah, what, what's the joke for you? And he goes, uh, what's 5Q plus 5Q? Oh, don't do And he goes, uh, I don't know what. Yeah. And he goes, 10Q. Yeah, welcome. Ha -ha. <laughs> he's like, oh my God, it was Borscht Belt humor. And he goes, I got another one for you. <laughs> sure, bring it on. What's 2Q plus 2Q? Stop, stop, tape, stop, tape, stop, tape. <laughs> and they actually stopped tape. Backed up oh, and said, no. let's try it again. <laughs> that's one we cannot put on the air. <laughs> but I heard that and I went, that's a freaking brilliant joke. <laughs> but see, that's another, that's another interesting thing about the Patches show was that it operated on two levels. One for the little kids yeah. and oh, one geez. for the parents. Yes. Yes. So, you, you know, so the parents could watch it and get some of the raunchier stuff. And the parents way were, over the kids. Exactly. Hey, JP, what do you call those beams in the top of the gymnasium? What, you mean the gym beams? <laughs> <laughs> and the kids at home are like, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then the mom in the kitchen's like, <laughs> <laughs> Choking on her drink. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Choking on her gym That's right. That's right. Yeah. So the show really wasn't broadcast live. You know? Well, yes, yes, it was. Yeah. 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 They yeah. would tape it, but uh, for the ones for the weekend, is it the Saturday one? Saturday was taped. Saturday one was taped. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll give, give, me, give me five feet. Come on. <laughs> I'll give you one. Hey, I'm, I'll do that. You want this? Yeah, well, that's one thing you can do. <laughs> there you go, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there, Saturday was Saturday was tape. Morning show was tape. Uh, that would go every morning at 10.30 or 11 o'clock with tape and show. 
And uh, yeah, that was, uh, we were going to go a whole year and do a, uh, a Safeway or something who wanted to buy it an hour show. But we didn't do it because it took too much away from the local audience. Uh, the Chris was really, he was really a devoted guy, devoted to his audience. And uh, he really, no, that's not good. No. We'd stop in the middle of something and we'd, no, that's not good. We'll try another one. And so his was a, was a good thing. I just saw a story that I'd never even heard before. Um, uh, Tony Garascio, who used to work, he was the floor director on the Patches show for many years. And he just posted uh, this video on, on um, Facebook a couple of days ago. Some of you may have seen it. And it's basically Bob and Joe Tui talking about what it was like to be on the show. And Joe told a story that I'd never heard before. He said, this gives you a sense of just how in tune Chris Wiedis was with kids. Okay, They brought a kid onto the show, and the kid was um, blind, and he was in a wheelchair. And the kid was going to show Chris, show JP, how he could re read Braille. And JP, this is live on the show, he's like, you cannot. There's no, you cannot, you are lying. You are lying to me, you can't read Braille. And Joe Tui is up in the booth going, oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is he? Somebody, that dad's going to like punch JP <coughs> in the face for this. this. He is coming way too hard on this kid. And the kid's like, no, no, really, I, I can read the Braille. And Chris is like, no, you can't. I think you've got the thing memorized. I don't buy it for a second. And the kid was like, no, really, I can. He goes, I'll tell you what. He takes the book away from the kid. I'm going to pick some random page and see if you can read it. And he hands the kid back the book, but he flipped the book upside down. And the guys in the booth are like, what the hell is he doing? And he hands the kid back the book, and the kid takes the book, and all of a sudden, the kid's face just lights up, and he went, you turned the book upside down. <laughs> he totally busted JP, but JP knew that he was going to bust him on it, and the kid thought that was the greatest. All of a sudden, he's part of the gag. He's part of the show. Chris is not, is not trying to you know, placate to him and, and, you know, oh, poor kid. He played the kid. The kid totally jumped on it, and the guys in the booth at that moment went, he knows his audience so well. We never, never would have crossed our mind to pull off that stunt. And he did it, and it worked, and the kid loved it. Yeah. Hey, that, that's worth of a hand of fan applause. Yeah. That's yeah. A Tom was just one of those guys. It was an on, he was an honest guy, really. And if, if, if it was good, he'd do it. But if it was really bad, no, no, he wouldn't do it. So it was, it, was, it was a pleasure being around that guy for as long as I was. Uh, he and Joni are in a in a cemetery in out in uh, uh, Edmonds. Edmonds. Yeah. Both facing the sunset, so they can watch the sunset. I thought that was a nice thing. That was Joni's head. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're okay. Anybody uh, else? Yes, sir. Yeah, I was wondering, what were your, your two favorite characters that you played? Not this one, but two characters. Oh, God. Uh, probably Boris, because I can get away with a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you can't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and then you say, what do you mean by that? <laughs> and then I leave, leave, the, leave the shack. <laughs> Going down the street. <laughs> By the way, thanks for the the man cave. That was great. Say again. Thanks for inventing the the man cave. You know, you you sit there in your in your comfy chair in a man cave. That was Boris. That was Boris as Ward. Who was the uh, sa your fa uh, second favorite character other than Boris? I think I said that. Oh God, there's just so many. I don't know. I was like Miss Smith. Miss Smith. Yeah, because yeah. never. Say, gee, Miss Smith, what do you got to say this for? Is it a hit? Is it a hit? Or yes. A hit? No. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I named my husband's go down the man cave. Yep. Because of Boris S. Ward? Yeah. See? Well, he must have been a hell of a guy. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is. 
We had a good time. Yeah. How many shows were done in total and over what? Six, 6,752. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> it was 23 years, 23 years, and for and it was five days a week. 15 of those years was was five days a week, twice a day, and once on Saturdays. So you're gonna have to do the math yourself. Wow. Okay. That was what again? For of those 23 years, it went from 1958 to two uh, to 81. 81. 81. 58, uh, February 10th, 1958, to uh, 1980, and for 15 of those years, it was on twice a day, five days a week, and once on Saturday. The rest of the time, it was on once a day. So those were all live. You had more yes. than you had to know. Yes. yes. Well, yeah, to, to you guys, it's holy. So, so us, it was a daily job. What's that big deal? You just say hey, we're there, we're doing it, we're working. And hey, it was good. We had a good time. And they didn't plan the show until the morning of the show. Well, sometimes a little later than that. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do next? Yeah, I don't know. Welcome. Thank you. Hey, was this your full-time job or? Was this a part-time thing and you had another job on the side? It was a part-time thing. And, but at the, uh, I was a floor director eight hours a day and then an hour and a half of doing the pantry show. And then how did you guys start this? How did you two meet and then? He was J.P. Pantry, a retired clown that lived on around a city dump. Hey kids, let's go see what J.P.'s doing today. And uh, I was a floor director holding the microphone in the right place most of the time. <laughs> okay, a lot of time. Uh, he went over to pick up the telephone and said, listen, uh, the, the Gertrude is always on the phone. Send me down a ham sandwich and an orange juice. Wait a minute, so I'm gonna have a picnic. And he dropped the phone. Bang, yeah. Well, so I picked up the, I picked up, the microphone was way up high. So I just up to the uh, up to the microphone. Okay, Julius, I'll set it right down. And <laughs> we took it from there. <laughs> and that's how Gertrude got started. Yeah, it's your turn. If you average out those numbers to about once a day over twenty three, you get about eight thousand episodes. Your chairman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll take your word for it. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> computer guy, of course. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes, sir. I was going to ask how much of the show was scripted, um, just an outline maybe? Exactly. Or... Uh, okay, I'm going down to Zoom and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk the elephant today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. And that was it. And, yeah, and I was, okay, I'll, I'm the animal man, so I'll make sure I got the, the elephant ready for you. Yeah. And we talked back and forth. And then, of course, uh, uh, Who's the audio content? Come on, who's the audio guy? Dwayne Smart. Dwayne Smart. Dwayne, Smart. Yeah. Uh, Dwayne, Dwayne uh, he had every every tape and every record there was in the world, and he would always said, geez, he'd burn out the uh, needles in the uh -huh. audio machine. He was just very good. Always had a always had an answer. And Bob and Chris would they would mess with, with him all the time because he didn't know what they were going to say, and he had this rack full of, of carts, cassettes, that he had to slam in at the right time. And so, you know, all of a sudden he'd have to slam in, oh, I'm little Johnny everything, you know, and then all of a sudden something else would happen, <laughs> pop a new one in, and it was, they were kind, they were trying to, they were, they were trying to burn him on a regular basis. They'd say something that they knew they need, he needed a sound effect for. Not smart, not smart, he was just too smart. He was quick. He was quick. Quick, quick. Yep. Cool. Um, as Boris S. Wart, I need to get the story straight. He made one public appearance. Can you tell that story? Coming out of a helicopter over the show at a, at a show in uh, in Bremerton on the middle of uh, a big lawn. JP got on, hi kids, how are you? Now time for Boris S. Ward. And I stumbled out of this uh, 
airplane, helicopter. They covered, covered me like a blanket. God, it was 1,500 kids pounding me in the middle. <laughs> 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 beating me up, and I'm laying on the floor crying. Okay, I'll give up. Yeah. <laughs> that was the last time Boris went out. <laughs> Boy, that's the last time. Thank you. Yep. Oh, one last thing. I got a squelcher. Our, 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 I argued with the Patches Pals, and I'm sorry for arguing with you, but I'm going to do it here. <laughs> with all the characters that, that Bob played, I know he played Santa Claus at Christmas time. Yeah. You knew that? <laughs> nice. How in the world could you know something like that? I listened very carefully, and I was very good, and I sent my name <coughs> to be put into the pal vac, and it never got there. Oh. Yes, you know, it's windy, but I thought I'd jump down the snow. I just make up the song to stop my eyes. It was scripted, but hey. Santa Claus is Santa Claus. You get away with everything with Santa Claus. You are always my Santa Claus. Oh. I don't know how to say that, but I'm a little sorry for you. <laughs> Associated with that was, you know, they had the they name a kid, and the, uh, the 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 machine would either be a smile with a ding or turn into a frown. The pal and, and I was wondering, did you guys make up the bad kids? Uh, and, and, and actually, do we look like the kind of guys? That would do that? <laughs> no, yes, we did most of the time. Yeah. But the, but the but the good kids were real kids, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I heard uh, Chris told me one time that um, before they started doing that, they actually they put in like a fake kid's name, and some kid had that same name. Oh. Okay, uh -oh. they'd have the same name, and he would cry to his mom, and the mom would call the show, and they're like, "Oh boy!" So we got to come up with something other than you know Tim or Mike or Steve or Bill. We got to come up with either a full name that there's no way that some kid's gonna have that name. You had to put a little disclaimers at the end. All names are coincidental. Exactly. Right. So yeah, so that that actually did happen. They would get Tyke. busted. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, why Tyke. Tyke. That's, that's right. That's why that's why they used, started using Tyke Turkey, because there was a. They originally it was, Tim was it Tim? Kevin. Kevin. Kevin, Kevin. Kevin Turkey. And some parent called saying, my son doesn't like being called Kevin Turkey at school because of your show. Oh. Why were you the Kevin Turkey? No, my brother was Kevin, and we always called him Kevin Turkey and laughed at him. So you're the one. <laughs> there was another one, too. Oh, okay, so there you go. So that's why they start, they, Chris said that's a legitimate beef, so we quit calling the turkey Kevin, and he started calling it Tykey, because that's what his mom called it. Yeah. yeah. I feel sorry for all those kids named Boris. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about all those kids? Uh, yeah, what about all the kids named Taiki? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Poor kids. They did a show in Russia with everyone. <laughs> Gillette number two. <laughs> <laughs> really? You got any idea how many takes I made? <laughs> uh, it's stock at Gillette. Yeah, and shaving cream in the eyes, that's bad news, yeah. man. That does not feel yeah. good. Yeah. Wow, I thought it was whipped cream. But whipped cream, you just smell like a pig. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just smells like spoiled milk in a hurry. Yeah. I guess it doesn't last long on the camera either. If it's so was it always shaving cream or did they? Always shaving cream. Always shaving cream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the guys down at the guys down at the end of the street was a seafood uh, uh, drug shop. They had a crazy one. What are you using? Who's shaving all this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why don't we all get together and we shave before we <laughs> Five Anybody else? Hello. Yes, sir. Hey. Hi, Bob. Oh, yeah. Hey. I met you three times when I was a kid. I'm, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I still remember it, every single one. Um, so when you when you envisioned these characters, was this something that you would propose to JP? Like, I got this new character and we could do it? Or, or oh, what do you, it didn't work out like that. Half these characters came in a makeup room. He's putting on his main face, you know. We got to get a guy, for, for a, 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 like a character, that's different. Okay, his, his name is Korst. 
Because we used to do the Gorse Fireman's Christmas Party. Mm -hmm. uh, J.P. and Gertrude. Yeah. But uh, anything to do with the town or something, you know, yeah, we would change the name. I mean, if, if it's funny, it's okay. A lot, a lot of more so than funny, but we tried to stay away from those. <laughs> and it was just sort of like, like this week we're gonna go with, uh, you know, a safari type theme. Oh, every day, every day. morning. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're gonna try this today. You know, he comes in and I got that and whatever. And we jack around and I'd steal and whatever he's got. But we had a good time, as you guys, you know, on your obvious, we had a good time. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I only have one complaint. Oh. And that is, one New Year's Day, I was trying to sleep in. Just New Year's Day, not New Year's Eve. And at eight in the morning, the phone rang. And I picked up the phone and someone had said, is Tim there? And I said, who's this? And he said, it's J.P. Patches. And he had won that spinner winner. Uh, my son. Oh. So then we got this big, huge Tootsie Roll thing. You remember those? Oh, Built gosh, with candy. Yes. And it was thrilling for him. Oh, but not cool. for me at 8 in the morning. <laughs> 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 that's funny. I can hear you on that. Three, two, one, next. <laughs> I'm curious how many Patches pals are in this room and how many are here? Okay, let's find out. How many are first Patches Pals? Okay, how many grew up here and watched the show? Okay, how many are Patches Pals wannabes? Okay, so we got a couple, we got a few. Good, all right, that's legit. Are you sure? I'm a Boris Buddy. Yes, sir. And the Boris, Boris Buddies. Buddies. And Boris Buddies. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Gertrude Gang. Gertrude Gang. How many Gertrude Gangs do we have here? It was all that was required to be a patch of foul was to just watch the show then? Oh, oh no. Oh, no, no. There was a checklist. There was a checklist. Wash behind your ears, comb your hair, drink your milk, drink your milk, drink your milk, your milk your hair, share your toys, your put your toys away. We had a list. Swear an epidemic. Obey your mom and dad. That's right. I had a list. Is it on there? Oh, oh, there, it is. Oh, there you go. You'll, there you go. You'll okay. have to go check her list. Find out if you are oh, a patches pal. I had a checklist on the refrigerator. That's the best place for it. I do too. Yeah. And we both had to make sure that we did it. Mm -hmm. So, as the floor director, <laughs> were you the one that really doused oh, JP yeah. with water every time uh, Grandpa <laughs> clock went off? Uh, the the water came from. He was awakened by Tiki Tur Tiki Turkey. Oh, yes, he did. It came out of the top. Came out of the top of Tiki Turkey. No, Grandpa TikTok. Grand Grandpa TikTok. Grandpa TikTok, and then he was he was spilling water on him. But we never we stayed away from water because you'd slip and fall. The floors were aluminum. Aluminum. Until they got the 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 carpet. The carpet. The carpet. The carpet right. Yeah, the fancy carpet had little games all over it. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, I I was also a charter member of the Banana Splits Club. <laughs> <laughs> and I was always I amazed at how similar the Banana Splits Club house was to JP's shack on the uh, in the city dump. I was wondering if there was ever any lawsuits laid against the Croft brothers <laughs> for stealing your set. <laughs> You're too advanced for a lot of people. That's all I know is that we Yes, ma'am. Can, can you tell us the story of when you had the snake on the show <laughs> and you had an interaction with it? And could you tell us, were you ever able to repay JP for all the help he gave you during that episode? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any more than that. Well, yeah. bring, I, I had snakes. We had eight foot pythons. We had, and then I'd get them in the hand, the small ones. They couldn't do any damage. But put a, put a camera and, and zoom, you know, zoom, zoom the lens off. You can make it a pretty big and scary. But, Was, no. Wasn't this the one with the snake was going for his nose? Big giant snake? Is that the story? Didn't one oh, that's like the one. Squeeze? Mm -hmm. Or the one that was around his neck? 
I heard something about that as well. I can't remember the details I'm of thinking, it. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Yeah. It's in the Northwest Icon. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We'll get back to that one. But I would, I would come in as the animal man. Right. And, uh, and with a snake around my neck, big deal snake, you know. I made sure I had the head of the snake. Oh. As the head of the snake goes, so goes the snake. <laughs> So, and, and he just was scared of snakes. Scared of, scared of, scared of. And uh, we used to play. Keep going. Anybody else? How yes, ma'am. How did the different um, famous people come on, like Colonel Sanders, people like that? How did they come on the show? Why am I not hearing her? Uh, because you're on the other side of the room. She was asking how you guys got famous people on the show, like Colonel Sanders and people like that. Did they contact you? When or they did came they... into town, they were always looking for publicity. You know, so they'd come to us more on, more often than not. You know, but I mean, if somebody was coming to town, some big shot, we'd make sure we got down to their house, their place where they were staying. But generally speaking, they would come to us. You remember the Colonel Sanders story that you told, that you told me? No, I don't. When he was on the show? Go. Cool. Turn around and face everybody, tell them the Colonel Sanders story. Well, he was asked about, Colonel Sanders was asked about, what was it, the mashed potatoes? Would you? Uh, coleslaw. Coleslaw? Was coleslaw. Was that what it was? Was it coleslaw? Yeah, because they, uh, I was a reporter there at the time and, and I interviewed him and he was pissed off because they, uh, the, 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 new, the, new, the new ownership. Uh, decided to grind some carrot into his coleslaw, and he thought that was the most horrible thing that I ever imagined. And I, and I contacted the, the spokesperson for Yum or whoever it was that took over the company. You guys said, we're just trying to add a little color. We're, 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 we're not trying to torpedo his coleslaw. You know? But he was so pissed off that they, that they screwed with his coleslaw. <laughs> Yeah, the original. Was. I said left, but. <laughs> well, Bob told a story. I, I had this on video where Colonel Sanders was asked about the mashed potatoes or something, and on live TV, he said, I wouldn't feed that slop to the hogs. <laughs> and the. Do you remember that? No. Colonel Sanders uh, saying he wouldn't feed the mashed potatoes to dogs. Oh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't feed that slop to dogs. That's God. And everybody was off to the side panicking a little bit. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Oh, but, hey, well, I, have, I have to tell, this is this is in the book. It's just, a, it's just a throwaway line, but I heard this is true, and that's why I put it in the book. Colonel Sanders allegedly developed his, his recipe for his Kentucky Fried Chicken working at the Twin Teepees. I've heard that. I've heard that. So I have to take it as gospel. I just present, I have to present, it was on the internet, must be true. So, <laughs> but he did live up here for a short period of time. And allegedly, he worked there, so who knows? Maybe that's where he, he came up. He knew us pretty good, you know. Yeah. He'd keep come up to the studio, come in, and see us, and talk, and blah, blah, blah. But he was a nice guy. Top of that. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to wrap things up here in just a second. And um, if anybody would like a copy of the book, please come on up. Bob will stamp, I will sign, and um, you can get pictures yeah, taken I, with I that gentleman there. And, I and we'll call I it good. I've got to stamp it because I've got multiple sclerosis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I can't use my right so, uh -oh. so I got And he's got his Boris S. Ward yeah, hat, too. Oh, That's God. right. So let's see. How, how do you want to work this? Um, Other way around. Barry. Yeah. Barry, go back. Nobody attack go back. now. Switch it. A, co a couple oh, people have already got books, Don't so they'll be in line. line. But I'll be selling books in the back, and then they yeah, can sign right Yeah, buy them up there, and then just bring them up here. Oh, there. So, there you go.